Welcome to Marriage Isn't Dead, the channel where we try to keep monogamy hot, fun, and sexy through self-improvement, yet again. This episode is perhaps one of the more important episodes that I am going to do in this project that I've started uh, about a month ago. Nothing is more important than in marriage and in long-term monogamy than your choice of person or spouse. It's the absolute number one critical thing that you could possibly do in your life, in my opinion, is choosing the right person to spend the rest of your life with. How do you do that? And why should you listen to me? I'm a relationship coach, been doing it for about four or five years at this point. Talk to hundreds of mostly men, some women, and I've seen and heard it all. And in my life, I've had plenty of relationships myself, I have been with the same woman for over 20 years and been married for 20 years. And we have a very, very solid relationship. And I want that for you. That's, that's the whole point of this project. And I appreciate you listening. If you do appreciate it, like, share, and subscribe, please, so we can get the word out. Modern dating and just dating in general at any time is really a numbers game. To find the right person, you've got to get out there and determine what you like, what you're looking for, what kind of person fits with you. Treat dating like it's an interview process. It's, it's almost like looking for an employee or a partner in life. It really, it really does come down to that. If you're going to go into business with somebody, you're probably going to know a thing or two about their background before you commit to them, correct? dating's the same way. Date with purpose. If you're young and you're listening to this and you just want to date for fun and you just want to go out there and have a good time, it's all good. I did the same thing. Go through it. You're going to find out what you like. You're going to find out who you jive with. You're going to find out what red flags are out there, what green flags are out there on your own. And you honestly could run into some problems. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Talk about some of the, the potential pitfalls that you can run into when it comes to the dating game so you can avoid huge mistakes. Guilty as charged. I've, I've made plenty of mistakes in my life, but one mistake I did not make is choosing the woman that I put a ring on. My wife is an outstanding person, and I couldn't imagine a better, better woman to, to spend my life with. And I want that for you, men and women. Okay. So I'll do the same podcast for uh, husbands. Don't worry. So husband material, I'm doing wife material today. I'll do husband material very soon. So stay tuned. Don't worry. Now, there's a lot of material out there when it comes to red flags and women. I'm not going to go through all of that because that could be its own episode on it in, in itself. I want to talk about green flags. I want to talk about things to look for in particular in this, in this episode. If you want to read a, a great book, really small read, really short read. Uh, it's called Red Flags by Dad Starting Over. Available on Amazon. It's fairly cheap or audible. You can download it and listen to it in a few hours. Very quick, very cheap summary. Very to the point. And I agree with, with all of those things that he wrote about. Men on the internet talk about red flags and women. Let's talk about green flags. That's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the positive things, okay, because women are beautiful. They're, they're amazing creatures, uh, and men are too. You know, we're great too, but <laughs> there's obviously bad actors on, in, in both sexes. First things first, you must feel attracted to a woman to even consider her as a long-term choice. You have to have the spark. You know what I'm talking about. You feel attracted to each other. You need that in the beginning of a relationship. A lot of, a lot of people out there think that uh, that, that spark can, can develop with time. I'm not a big believer in that. Either you have it or you don't. You need the spark to stay alive long-term in marriage because you are going to have tough times. 
when it comes to marriage. It just, that just happens. So you need the spark. You need to have that attraction to begin with, period. You know, if I'm talking to you and you're already married and maybe you settled, maybe you've, you chose a, a, a safe partner, well, you can hate me, okay? But you need, you need to feel attracted to, to your person, period. That goes for men and women goes both ways. So let's talk about five big things to look for in a quality woman. We're not talking about physical beauty. These are the intangible traits. Obviously, men are visual creatures. We want attractiveness, pretty, healthy, great body. All of that stuff matters. Yes, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to blow smoke up your butt. Like I said, if you feel attracted to that person, that's what's important. So number one, having a good relationship with her parents, especially her father. That's a huge green flag when it comes to women. If you want to get a glimpse into, the, into her future, take a look at her mother. Okay. Now, some of this may be offensive to you. I don't mean offense to you. I've talked to thousands of men online and talked to hundreds of guys one-on-one, -on -one, and that, that is a common denominator. The way that their wife acts has a tendency to mirror her mother. Don't shoot the messenger. Particularly the mother's interactions with her father. Take a look at how your potential woman's mother treats her father. That is very, very important because that's the model that she had growing up. And most likely that's how she's going to act as she gets older. Some people can say that they, they had bad parenting and they, they don't want to act like that in adulthood. That's the exception. But I'm telling you, the rule is a woman a lot of times it's going to act like her mother when it comes to adulthood and especially when it comes to raising kids because that's that's the model she had so generally speaking mothers are the nurturers in in life and fathers prepare children for adulthood so her interactions that she had as with her father will carry over into her adulthood that's in plenty of research plenty of, of literature daddy issues if she has daddy issues, that's, that's, that's a red flag. Absolutely. If she's got a great relationship with her father and he's a good man, green flag. Green flag all day long. And there's one exception. If a woman recognizes that she did not have a great upbringing and she vows to never act like that, that's the exception. So that's number one. Number two, agreeable. Is she agreeable? How do you... How do you know? How do you know if she's agreeable or not? Especially if you've not really been, if you don't have a whole lot of experience with women, how do you know? How do you know she's going to be agreeable long term? You can tell if she doesn't want to rock the boat, if she's, she likes conflict, if she, if she likes arguing, most likely <laughs> that's, that's going to carry over into long term monogamy and beyond. So if she's agreeable, she's going to want to get along with others and not rock the boat. She's going to be helpful and considerate of other people's feelings. And there's plenty of ways to test this. If, if you want to find out if you're dating currently, or if you're dating after divorce, there's plenty of ways to test agreeableness when it comes to women. How does she treat others? Waitresses, children, random people on the street, how does she treat those people? If she's bitter and argumentative and negative all the time, eventually that negativity is going to be directed at you. Eventually. So take that seriously. If she's a very, very negative and constantly in conflict with the people around her, take note. Most likely that's not going to change. Does she laugh at your jokes? Does she have a sense of humor? Does she get your humor? Everybody's humor is a little bit different. You know, some people are situational. Some people don't have a whole lot of humor. Uh, 
some people can be very serious, but does she like to be around you? Does she like to be around other people? All of those things are critical to, to look at when you're assessing agreeableness. Agreeableness, I guess. Is that a word? It's a word. All right. <laughs> so that's number two. Number three, does she take care of herself? Does she have a self-care journey of her own? If you're listening to this and you're and you're you're watching this video, obviously you're probably working on yourself trying to be a better human being. Is she doing the same thing? Does she take care of herself physically? Does she go to the gym? Does she eat right? Does she make time for herself? Does she spend her time wisely? Does she drink socially? Not excessively. Is she on her phone all the time? Does she need social media attention? attention is she addicted to her phone those are things that uh, that are critical especially when it comes to modern women and mental health does she take care of herself that's number three number four is she selfless and is she nurturing that is absolutely critical when it comes to motherhood and long-term monogamy because if you plan on having kids that will be one of the more challenging things that you do in your life. And you need somebody that can handle it. Is she selfless? Is she willing to put others' needs in front of her own? That's selflessness. Does she take care of you when you're sick? That's a way to test it. If you're not feeling well, does she ask do you need anything? Can I pick up anything at the pharmacy? Do you need a cough medicine? Anything like that, if she provides that unsolicited, you got to keep her. That's, that's a beautiful thing when it comes to women. I don't care how hard you are as a man. That's, that, that gives you warm fuzzies. You know, if you're down and out, does she try to help you instead of making your life more difficult? That's nurturing. That's a beautiful thing. And ladies, if you're listening to me, that's a big plus. We're big on loyalty. Okay. Huge on loyalty and the nurturing aspect and the selflessness. That's a very big plus. Does she show up on time? Does she respect your time? Is your time valuable to her? It's valuable to me. Is it valuable to her? Does she call if she's going to be late? Is she willing to pick up something for you when it's inconvenient for her? putting your needs in front of her needs. Those things are huge pluses. Is she empathetic to your perspective? And honestly, are you empathetic to hers? Is she great with kids? All of those things are nurturing aspects and selflessness. And it is super sexy and attractive, ladies, to men when you do those kind of things. So that's number four. Number five, does she enjoy sex? That's a giant green flag when it comes to long-term monogamy. So a great way to test this at the very beginning of a relationship, does she want to ha have sex two to three times a week at the beginning of a relationship? That's a great benchmark. If she wants to have sex multiple times during the week, that's a huge green flag when it comes to a long-term relationship with a woman because eventually that will fall off as time goes on. That's inevitable. In monogamy, a woman's sex drive is going to decrease. Men have testosterone. Our libido has a tendency to stay the same. Women's libido decreases in monogamy. That's pretty much a given. So if she starts at the point where she wants to have sex with you two to three times a week, once a week, long term, is very maintainable. So here's the rub for many men. And I can't tell you how many times I've heard this in the relationship sphere, the manosphere, the red pill stuff, is promiscuity. It's not always a bad thing, but it's a red flag for sure. Okay, if she's had a lot of sexual partners in her past, that's a problem. Okay, is it a, is it a deal breaker? No. It's not, particularly if it's a lengthy list of sexual partners, it can indicate low self-worth. 
that's that's why that's a red flag. Am I am I shaming women for having a high sex drive and having a lengthy sexual history? No, I'm not. But it is a red flag. What you want to look for in her past is long-term relationships. Is she capable of having long-term relationships? That's what you want to look for when it comes to sex. So if she's got two long-term relationships in her past versus a lot of flings, okay? That's the kind of stuff that you want to look for when it comes to promiscuity and a lengthy sexual history. So having sex with one person 100 times is a completely different animal when she's had sex with 100 guys once. She's had, she's had the same amount of sex, but it's completely apples and oranges between those two women. The latter is, is that's, a, that's a red flag. So if, she, if she's had sex many times with one person, huge green flag. When it comes to long-term relationships, that's where people really learn what their desires are, what they enjoy in the bedroom, what they don't enjoy, because that's when experimentation happens. On a one-night stand, it's very difficult to understand what your partner wants and what you want if you've just, just gone at it once. If you've been with somebody for a long time, you have a tendency to understand their needs and vice versa. So she's had a couple long-term relationships that have lasted a year plus, green flag. So long-term relationships is where people learn how to turn each other on. If she has sexual trauma in her past or she is sex negative, which you will know as time goes on, that will be a, a, a big time problem long-term. She is gonna have to deal with that eventually because you can't change that. You can't change her. She's gonna have to want to change herself. Am I saying that that's always a bad thing and you need to avoid somebody like that? Not necessarily. If she's actively working on herself and wants to be better, green flag. That's a green flag for any, anything. So if you value sex long-term, sexual trauma and a negative sex view is a, is a problem long-term. And when it comes to a long-term relationship, you can coach her, okay? If she doesn't have a whole lot of experience in the bedroom, you can teach her. There's nothing wrong with that at all. If she's not great in the bedroom, you can teach her. Open-mindedness is the key when it comes to that, especially for her, but it goes for, for the man as well. It goes both ways. Open-mindedness and empathy to each other's perspective is critical when it comes to learning what tur turns each other on and being open to trying new things. Because there may be something in the bedroom you've never tried before that could be a, a big time turn on for both of you. So experiment, always push the, push the boundaries a little bit without going over the boundaries. <laughs> so in closing, don't rush into marriage. Vet a woman for at least 18 months. Limerence lasts anywhere from six months to 36 months. Within about a year and a half, you pretty much know the person that you're with. People can only fake it for so long. Eventually, you're going to see the real person, and it takes time. Vet them. Dating is a numbers game. If you're seeing lots of red flags and you're recognizing that something's wrong, you're not compatible, move on. Time is your greatest asset. Everybody has a finite amount of time, okay? Why waste your time if you know it's not working? And that goes for men and women, both. I mention this because if she's pushing you for marriage at month three, four, or even six, that's a huge red flag, huge red flag. The person you choose to marry is probably the most important decision that you make in your entire life. I've talked to many guys that have made a, a terrible choice. Is it the end of their life? No. Can you change your life? Yes. I'm talking to the younger people in particular for your first marriage. Choosing the right spouse is 
a very important decision and take it very seriously. Don't rush into marriage within two or three months with the first person that you, that you sleep with. I have seen that many times in my coaching and that is a recipe for disaster. Take it easy when it comes to commitment. Long-term monogamy is amazing when it's done well and you need to choose the right person. And hopefully this is resonating with you. Don't marry the first woman that gives you a sexual attention or even any attention. That's a huge mistake many men make. Vet the women that you're with, treat it like an interview process, and you can steer clear of many issues. So most of the women that I'm describing with my green flags list, they're gonna have a high self-worth. So dudes with low self-worth will be practically invisible to them. So if you're having trouble attracting the kind of women that I'm talking about here, work on yourself, work on your mindset, specifically work on having a, an abundance mindset, a scarcity mindset where she's the best I can do. That's an issue. If you're, if, if you have a tendency to think like that, you're not ready for marriage. You're not ready to date because you're going to invite problems into your life. Work on yourself. <laughs> Work on your career, work on, on, on style, keeping in shape, but specifically work on your mindset. It's critical to have an abundance mindset in life, and in particular when it comes to choosing a spouse. So maximize your physical appearance, that's okay, but mindset is the biggest factor, and it is the biggest hurdle by far in my experience with coaching. Some guys can't do it, but you can at least try to reparent yourself to the point where you can avoid many of these pitfalls that I'm talking about and, and recognize the green flags that I gave you here. That goes for men who are 16 or 46 or 56. It goes for all of you. So keep listening to my material. Look me up on socials. Join the private Facebook group, Marriage Isn't Dead, and be better than you were yesterday. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. Wife material. They're out there. There are good women out there, just like there are good men out there. Don't get discouraged. And don't listen to the, to the, to the jerks out there that are saying that all women are bad. It's, that's garbage. It's complete garbage. I married a wonderful woman. I knew I had a wonderful woman when I met her because I experienced dating. I dated plenty of ladies. I recognized early some of the red flags and I built on that experience over time. And eventually I ran into a woman that I've recognized as wife material and she's incredible. And I want that for you. So until next time, be desirable.